Hello. In our last tutorial, we looked at purchasing an investment property as a rental, um, and we analyzed a house at 962 Courtyard Crescent in Arcata that's currently for sale for $229,900. What we're looking at is to see what our cash flow from that investment would be. And so we found that by starting out calculating our net income using our value drivers, and then knowing that not all of our expenses namely depreciation or cash expenses, we adjusted our net income to show how much cash we would receive. And we used two methods to calculate it. In the tutorial that we're gonna do now, we're gonna use information from this tutorial to see whether or not 962 Courtyard Crescent is gonna be a good investment. So in this spreadsheet, I have ourselves set up to do two profitability analysis on that property, one where we ignore salvage value, it's a good introduction, um, we just analyze the cash flows of purchase and rent, even though we know we can sell it for money when we're done with it, right? We're going to ignore that for simplicity's sake. Then after we kind of master that, we're going to calculate a salvage value and see how that changes things. So the first thing we're going to do is update our value drivers, our discount rate, our purchase price, and our cash flows. And all of that data is in this sheet that's called calculating cash flow. In Excel, that's no problem. We just say, oh, that's not our discount rate. We just say that we want to go to another sheet and choose another number. So our discount rate is equal to 10%. Our purchase price is equal to $229,900. And if you click on the cell, you can see what it's entering. And within parentheses, it puts a single parentheses, it puts the name of the cell. I mean, it puts the name of the sheet that you're getting the information from, and then the shell, the cell on that sheet. If this video is blurry for you, go down to the bottom of the screen, and there's a button where you can adjust the resolution, and you should be able to adjust it to high definition and be able to see this. Um, if you're still having problems, let me know. Like the discount rate in the rental cash flow, we get that off of our calculating cash flow worksheet. You can reference the cash flow in either one of the two methods that we use to calculate it. All right, so let's do a profitability analysis, starting where in a scenario where we ignore our salvage value. So at time zero, we're gonna have a cash outlay of $229,900 for the house, or for the condo. And then for each of the next 27 years, we're gonna have a cash inflow of $12,434.45. If I double click that corner, it fills in all of my cells for me. I can then calculate net present value and internal rate of return. So my net present value is going to be equal to my initial year's cash flow plus the net present value at a 10% discount rate of all of the cash flows between year one and year 27. Ooh, that is not a pretty number. $115,040.18 negative. It's not a good investment. So tell me really quickly, if our NPV is negative, is our IRR going to be greater than or less than 10? If you said less than, you're right, because the reason that our NPV is negative is because this project doesn't generate a rate of return that meets our required rate of return. So this discount rate, or I'm sorry, our IRR is going to be less than our discount rate. And there we have it at 2.93%. So based on that, we can conclude that based on this data and ignoring our salvage value, this is not going to be a good investment. And I'll type in, if we ignore salvage values, this investment does not meet our required criteria. All right, that would be my explanation or my decision. This is not a good investment. Let's look at it now while we include our salvage value. So I'm going to start by setting ourselves up and doing all our cash flows up until year 27, and then we're going to calculate the cash flow in the 27th year. I'm going to get my value drivers again from my other page, my discount rate, my purchase price, and my rental cash flow. 
By referencing the numbers on these other cells, if I change something in my cash flow assumption, like the amount I purchased the house for, it'll update throughout the entire spreadsheet and it'll change my NPV and IRR. My cash flow at the beginning is an outflow or a negative 229,900. And for the rest of the years, I'm going to receive $12,434.45. I'm just going to double click this and let it pull itself down. Oops, look, I didn't put in an absolute reference and see how it messed up. So I'm just going to clear those out and do it again. It's equal to my cash flow of 12434 with an absolute reference. Double click it. It'll go all the way down to the bottom. And I'm just going to clear out this year 27 because in our year 27 when we sell the house or the condo, our cash flow is going to be different. It's going to be larger. But what we're going to do now is figure out what that's going to be. So we've made an estimation that you can find in the previous sheet, it, which is that our house will be worth roughly $450 in 27 years. So we're estimating our salvage value. So we're assuming that after 27 years of appreciation, the house will roughly double in value. The first thing we need to do is figure out how much tax we're going to have to pay on the sale of that house. And in order to figure out the tax that we're going to need to pay, we need to figure out how much we've depreciated the house over time so that we can figure out the book value. Because as you probably remember from your accounting class, you're only going to have to pay taxes on the gain. That is the amount you receive in excess of your book value. So we have to figure out how much depreciation we've had on the property. Well, we've depreciated the property for 27 years, and every year we depreciate it by our depreciation rate multiplied by the house price. And our, our house price and our depreciation rate are both on the calculating cash flow sheet. So our depreciation rate multiplied by the house price. So you can see the formula up here. It's 27. That's the number of years we've been depreciating because we're looking at, at the end of year 27. And then we've got our calculating cash flow B17, which is our depreciation rate multiplied by the purchase price. So we depreciate 229,900 multiplied by 3.7% every year, and we've been doing it for 27 years. So we've appreciated, I'm sorry, depreciated $229,900, the entire purchase price of the house. So the asset is fully depreciated. If our asset is fully depreciated, our book value is going to be equal to our purchase price minus our accumulated depreciation. So we have to pay tax on the amount that we receive in excess of our book value. And to calculate that, we take the amount that we receive and we subtract our book value. So we need to pay tax on $450,000. That's our taxable gain. So to get our, the tax we pay, we need to take our taxable gain and multiply it by our tax rate. And our tax rate, again, is found on the calculating cash flow sheet. Over here in the value drivers, we see that our income tax rate is 25%. So we're going to need to pay tax of $112,500. I'm going to make that negative. So my net after-tax cash from the sale of this house is going to be $450,000 plus a negative $112,500. And that means we're going to have after-tax cash flow from our sale of $337,500, assuming that our $450,000 salvage price is right. So the next thing we need to do, we can't just plug that number in down here because we know that we're going to receive rent for all or part of that year. And to simplify things, I'm just going to assume that we receive rent from all of that year. However, if you were doing this for your own analysis, you might say that you were going to sell the house in the summer, or you might say you'd start at the beginning of the year. Whatever it is, um, but I'm going to assume that I'm going to wait and try to sell it around Christmas. So the net after tax cash for my sale, I'm going to receive that. And then I'm going to receive rent in that year 27 that's equal to my rental cash flow. So in that last year, I have not only the money that I receive after tax from the sale, but I also have the rent that I'm going to receive. So in that last year, while I wait for Excel to respond, my total cash flow in my terminal year is going to be $349,934. I take that number, and that's what I plug in here for my last year. Because in my last year, I'm going to sell the house, pay some tax, and receive some rent. 
And because I already have this calculated net of taxes, I don't need to make any other changes. So let's see if this changes our cash flow, our net present value and internal rate of return enough to change our investment decision on this property. So our net present value is equal to that initial cash outlay plus the net present value of our cash flows discounted at our required rate of return of 10%. Negative $89,296. So I can still tell that my IRR is not going to be 10%. Let's see what it is. Six point one three percent. So if I have a discount rate of ten percent, this is not going to be a good investment, even if I include the salvage value. And then I'll type that in here down for my description. Do I want this investment? Even when including the salvage value, this house is not a good investment. And if you're looking at purchasing rental properties, you can do this for every house on the market and you'll probably find some that look good. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and uh, email me if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.